Hello everyone and welcome to Creativity Unleashed. This is part five. We are going to be finalizing the gantry, the limit switches, the troughs and e-chain, and of course getting the paint job done on the table. So I hope you guys enjoy. So as you can see, we've got the magnetic drill out and we are drilling some holes in the top of the gantry. And these are for the rack and pinion drive mount system. We ended up needing to cut some spacer plates um, to weld to the top of the gantry to both give a little clearance for the motor's um, um, gear that's um, driving the rack. Um, so you can see that right here. We cut a bunch of plates, I weld them together, and drilled the holes all at once. And also the top of the gantry um, wasn't perfectly level to the front, so we ensured that the front of the linear rails were perfectly um plumb or level depending on how you like to say that but technically plumb and then we adjusted the tops of the plates to ensure that they were level and then got those tack welded in place and you can see that going on right now and that ensures that the mounting brackets that we had from Avid CNC would be able to mount the gear rack without having any twisting action going on because if there would be any um, kind of lateral force on them it would wear the gears out prematurely so we're just ensuring that that all is super straight and worked out really well as you can see here so of course the next step is to make the motor mount for the y-axis you can see the y-axis plate there and i'm simply going to weld two nuts together and then insert them inside of a piece of pipe. Of course you could use a solid bar, drill it and tap a hole or use one of those nuts that has longer thread through it. I just wanted extra stability and one nut wasn't going to do that as well. So I pounded it into the pipe and then um, just real careful to not weld the threads and then I'm welding it captive in place ground it down a little bit with the flap disc and now taking it over to the belt grinder to ensure a nice square even finish. I'm adding another little chunk of metal to it to set the spacing out a little further from the edge and you can see here we're using a little magnet to weld it to the plate of the Y axis. So getting that fully welded in place and of course having the screw in there to keep spatter out of the threads adding a little piece of angle iron and this piece of angle iron is where um, we're going to add the e-chain going across so I'm just cutting a piece of 1x2 galvanized thin wall tubing with the angle grinder of course and getting some more tacks on it and so to the outside of this we'll just drill a few holes here and attach the e-chain but before we do that, I'm taking the thing apart so that I can fully weld everything out without melting the circulating linear rails that do have quite a few um, plastic components in them. So I'm just using the 14 inch abrasive chop saw to cut some 3 quarter by 3 quarter inch thin wall galvanized tubing. And these are being attached to the back side of the gantry. And this is to support the U-shape track that is a, just a standard like stud, but it's the track unit that is 3 and 5 eighths inches wide. And the reason I'm going with that is because they're light and commonly available and already bent in the right shape. So I'm just adding several supports in here so that that track will be completely supported along the length of it using the angle grinder here to cut it out. And of course, I'm going to be taking off those really sharp corner edges to make it a little easier to work with. Hopefully not get cut on it. So then I can just install these with some standard self-tapping screws that are commonly used with those. So you can see right here we're installing the E-chain connecting multiple links together. They often come in about a meter long length and you can just do a little bit of coupling work and they pop right together and you can make a nice long track, a nice chain that runs inside the track. 
and that works out extremely well keeps your cables all very neat and orderly and also helps them to last longer because they're well supported throughout all the movement that's going on and keeps them from getting kinked or pinched or anything like that so you can see we're right now working on the z-axis drilling some holes in the the different plates we have some spacers between it and the y-axis just because of the screw heads that stick out from the y-axis plate and we're getting it all adjusted to ensure that it's perfectly plumb in all directions and um, square and parallel to the table and all the correct adjustments to ensure that as it cuts the material that it will make very clean straight 90 degree cuts into the material we wouldn't want it at an angle beveling all of the material that is being cut on it so there's quite a few little holes so we're just drilling them out filing of course the back side putting the nuts on tighten those in and you can see i just installed the magnetic breakaway and the 100 amp plasma torch So on the four corners, I am installing some eighth inch by, I believe, inch and a half angle iron. And these are for the limit switches. Of course, the um, gantry has some nuts welded to it on each side. You can see here I'm marking the centers of the linear rail. And that is marking the positioning for welding the nut in place. And we'll put a bolt in there with a, another captive, another nut that will lock the bolt in place. And that way we'll be able to set the exact um, distance to square the gantry. You'll probably see that later in the calibration of the machine. And since I'm welding so close to the um, circulating linear rails, I'm using a wet rag to immediately cool off the weld right after I am done welding it. Of course, right there, I was just bolted it together for alignment purposes. But you can see I put a little switch in the position and we are marking and repeating the process on all four sides. One side did need a bit of an offset so we used a piece of tubing to um, offset the piece of angle iron so that the gantry could go further back so we could utilize more of the table to ensure that it would be able to cut the full 5 by 10 size sheet. So when we first installed it, it was a little too close, and we had to remove that and add in an extra spacer. Here you can see we're adding in the spacer. So quite a lot of progress was made today on the CNC machine. So as you can see, we actually mounted the Z-axis. Um, this one is a very, very fancy Z-axis in my opinion, um, because that it... Um, it has the up and down system and the magnetic breakaway which I've demonstrated in other ones where it has a breakaway very strong um, of course your limit switches up here we've got our motor mount so another NEMA 23 goes up here the rack and pinion drive system as you can see there rolls and works perfectly well um, we've got our trough in place for the e-chain, and the e-chain comes up here. Of course, uh, all the torches and wires, a lot of those go through there. Uh, down here, we're actually completed. We just don't have the brackets mounted right now, but it's all ready for the motors to go on. And then these are the limit switches. So I'm going to be repeating the same process on the y-axis, welding nuts to the y-axis plate. And that ensures that I can set the exact stopping point of the y-axis to the limit switch. And it gives it just a little more adjustment. And of course you can switch the length of bolt you want to use to um, really be able to fine tune your, your limits. So here you can see we're using the abrasive chop saw to cut some 1 inch, 8 inch angle iron. And these are being welded to both sides of the gantry. They also get a hole drilled in them for the limit switches on the Y axis. Um, of course, I would recommend using a better quality limit switch. We even melted a few of them while just soldering the wire connections into place. So there's the drilled holes. 
and we need to add a few components so that we can add the E chain on the X axis, so removing the trough and welding in kind of an arm that sticks out to attach the E chain to and a few supports. So you can see right there. And that worked out extremely well. Also cutting off a little extra links there and adding another little piece of tubing to attach the E chain to using the 2 by 72 inch belt grinder to clean up some of the parts. So here we're using the Ellis bandsaw to cut some inch and a half square tubing to make supports for the main control panel. All right, Sam, so I'm gonna be welding like right here. So if you wanna move, and again, you're a dog who likes welding. Our dogs sure do seem to like to be around the metalworking process, but sometimes they're just a little bit too close for comfort. We ended up having to actually move the position of the main control box just because our wires weren't going to be quite long enough, and it made more sense later to put it underneath where you can see the trough of the E chain further down, but we just simply cut off the pieces of tubing and move them down further to the other side. All right, so we disassembled the CNC machine and we have it ready for paint. We decided to just tape off the linear rail instead of um, taking out all that many screws. We've already painted some underneath first, uh, so that shouldn't be any problem there. So I decided to use more red oxide primer paint to spray on everything. Um, it may have been better to just use the automotive um, primer, um, but I ended up just going with something that I was more familiar with. And then I mixed, had some custom paint mixed up, and it's industrial paint, and I just love the look of it. I decided to go with a two-tone color scheme. So I'm spraying purple on, and while the purple is still wet, I have a separate paint gun that I'm misting on a bit of metallic kind of green and I was going for an alien vibe. I wanted something that felt like it was out of this world, but yet alone kind of royal and elegant and something that looked like nothing else. I spent quite a bit of time looking at other CNC machines on Google and I realized there was nothing that I found that had a color um, scheme like this. And so I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm not sure that I would ever do anything like this color scheme again, but it's really cool and kind of strange, and I really like that. I think that's a lot of fun. Well, I guess this wraps up part five of the build series. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.